The Colorado State University Stream Ecology Lab has, with generous support from the Murr family, been conducting field research on the Upper Colorado River. Researchers have been studying this stream on and off for about the last 18 years, but we've been working here very intensively for the last five. We wanted to take this opportunity to give you a better idea of who we are and what we do. The field site is as neat and tidy as ever, and the ever-improving bunkhouse is just a flower box away from cottage status. Todd is an assistant professor at CSU and is working on several projects at the site this summer. Jeremy's fieldwork is completed, and when he's not writing his thesis, he's wishing his fieldwork wasn't completed. Here Jeremy is using a special viewer to get a clear view of the bottom of the stream. This is Steve Cito. Steve is an undergraduate student at Colorado State. Steve is working on a project dealing with insect movement behavior. This is Aaron Hoffman. Aaron is a PhD student at Colorado State and is studying how aquatic insects colonize stones in the river. These researchers and their projects are just part of a large research effort that has involved almost 15 people over the last five years. You've probably noticed how much algae grows in this stream. Collectively, our research is aimed at the diverse group of insects that graze this algae, a few of which are shown here. We are interested in how they use their aquatic habitat to coexist with each other. The two habitat parts we focus on are current speed and the structure of algae which we gain a better appreciation for when we view them up close underwater. So let's take a close look at these insects and see how they're adapted to their natural habitat. This is a fairly large mayfly nymph called Betis. Here you can see its little gill flaps on its abdomen. It uses these to breathe, similar to the way a fish does. Notice how streamlined and hydrodynamic Betis is. This shape allows them to do moves, like this. This is one of the more rare sights you'll see in a stream. It's an adult winged Betis that's returned to the water to lay her eggs. When female adult mayflies are ready to lay their eggs, they fly around until they find a rock like this one that's sticking out of the water. They land on that rock, climb underwater, and lay their eggs on the rock surface. Females like this one lay a lot of eggs at a time, and their egg masses are characterized by their silvery color and their tombstone-like shape. A broader look reveals how many tombstones there can be on these rocks. And these are left by only the fittest mayflies, who have, in their lifetime, avoided both aquatic and terrestrial predators. And still, one of their greatest challenges to overcome is the shearing force of current. Now let's take a closer look at another type of mayfly. This one is called Epioris. Like Betis, Epioris is also a grazer. Epioris has a very flattened body shape. This flat shape allows them to stay down really low, close to the rocks, and out of the current. So rather than swimming or leaping through the current like Betis does, Epioris uses its flat shape to stay out of the current completely. This is the last mayfly we're going to show you. It's called Drunella, and it uses very strong claws to hold on in the current. It can also cover its body with algae which makes it very camouflaged and difficult for fish predators to see. Drunella is mainly a grazer, but if given the opportunity, will also prey on other insects. Here, if you look closely, you can see a Drunella feeding on one of the adult mayflies that we saw earlier. Now let's take a look at some caddisfly larvae. Caddisfly larvae like this one, called Microsema, are special because they can produce silk. While other insects can produce silk, very few use it in the way that caddisflies do. One unique way they use silk is to use it as a sort of glue to put together cases like this one. This is a caddisfly called Lepidostoma, 
which is easy to identify by its cone-shaped case. Because Lepidostoma has to drag its case around, it prefers structured habitats like these that have lots of footholds. What appears to be small pebbles littering the tops of these stones are actually another caddisfly, a member of a family of caddisflies called the Glossosomatids. Glossosomatids are very small and are unique because they build these cases out of silk and pebbles. Almost like a turtle shell, glossosomatid cases provide excellent protection from predators. With this protection, they can crawl along, drag their cases with them, and happily feed on algae without worrying about becoming fish food. Inside these shelters, there's another unique caddis that belongs to a family of caddis flies called the hydrocycid. Hydrocycids spin their shelters, as well as a small net inside of them, out of silk. They pop out of their shelters, as you can see them doing here, to feed on small particles of food that get trapped in their nets. For angling, adult hydrocycids are best mimicked by large longhorn caddis patterns. Here's another caddis fly called Brachycentris. These larvae are easily recognized by the squared off shape of their case, which is built of wood and almost resembles log cabin construction. Brachycentris larvae use silk to cement their cases to stones where the current is very fast, stick their legs out, and wait to catch whatever the current brings them. The one on top here was lucky enough to catch a Betis mayfly. The very abundant Brachycentris adults are best mimicked by light-colored, medium-sized caddis patterns. Stoneflies are predators, and because of their large size as larvae, they try to avoid fish predation by only being active at night. Thus, they are rarely seen on the stream bed. Because of this behavior, stoneflies are most available to fish as adults. Fly patterns range from large stimulators to small yellow sallies, which simulate these chloroperlid stoneflies, who are sharing their stone with a common housefly. While the focus of our research is on insects, we also recognize that the insects are the base of a food web that includes a very productive fish community. Famous insect eaters are the trout, which in this stretch of river are mostly brown trout. Less conspicuous is the smaller, more camouflaged Paiute sculpin. Other members of the fish community include speckled dace and suckers. We're also interested in the diverse terrestrial fauna that are supported by the stream and its inhabitants. The Upper Colorado River has opened our eyes to the beauty of streams and the complexity of stream ecosystems, and we hope it has for you, too. This short film is part of a larger documentary project that Jeremy Monroe and Aaron Hoffman are working on. We look forward to sharing our finished product with you. We appreciate your generosity and support, and we thank you for your time.